Suelo. Hello everyone. Welcome to my very small YouTube channel about knitting and fiber and mostly knitting. My name is Isabel. I have three sons. I have three cats. Some say it's related. And uh, I'm filming these videos in English because I have been back in France for over 30 years, but I used to live in the United States and I have no opportunity right now to practice my English. So you are my excuse to uh, practice my English at least once a week, my talk in English because I can read, write and uh, um, understand spoken uh, English. So you are my excuse to do so. And uh, today it's going to be a video about my regular knitting adventures, the regular type of video you see about, you know, everywhere else by all the other YouTubers who talk about that. So if you are not too much bothered by my accent and my hesitations, and if this sounds good to you, please stay tuned. So as everyone else, does I'm going to start with what I am wearing and I'm sorry I was wearing that sweater not long ago in another video not a couple of weeks ago uh, but do you do that I organized all my <laughs> outfit today to go to work around one piece it was not that one piece but uh, I'm wearing uh, my uh, fishbone chunky sweater uh, the the pattern is by Nerunga Ruke and I made that back in, I finished it uh, two years ago in December, no, one year ago in December uh, 2021 and this yarn uh, for, from the, for the sweater I brought back uh, from the Pyrenees from a mill but it's, it's not, um, they have a shop and uh, it's not yarn they produce. It's Donegal tweedy kind of yarn. It's a very uh, rough and, and dry uh, to the touch yarn, light and warm. So um, this green color is the one uh, I decided, why I decided to wear it. Uh, and I have a commercial, commercial in it uh, scarf of that bright pink. Uh, it's also uh, uh, one piece I decided to wear um, because of uh, the one finished object I was going, I'm going to be talking about. This uh, is a, a, a store brand type of knitting and I've had it for years and years and years and years, maybe 15 years, maybe more than that, I do not know. I've never washed it, I've worn it a lot and you see, it's perfect. It's one of these brands from stores, from uh, grocery stores we have in France. And I'm quite amazed. I bought it on sale, on January sales, I think I recall. And there is a bit of cashmere in it, but you know, I cut the label, so I don't know how much. It was maybe 10, 15%, no more than that. The rest is lamb, lamb wool, I think. And it's, you know, in perfect, perfect condition, even though I've been wearing it every winter. So uh, uh, the bright pink scarf and the green sweater is um, some an association I made uh, around one piece. I'm gonna be just talking about one of my finished objects. You haven't seen it as a whip because I've, I've made it. Uh, since my last um, uh, Knitting Adventures episode and because I like the pink and green association. So one finished object that was not a whip uh, last time I filmed the uh, Knitting Adventures uh, video, so that's two weeks ago, uh, it took me four days to finish it. Uh, is a Manhattan hat. So I've been using and I've had this idea for a very long time to make a hat with, with the remaining of, and I'm going to place pictures, the remaining of um, 
yarn I bought in the Pyrenees several years ago. And I used, uh, when was that? Uh, when did I finish it? Yes, I finished it in December 2020. So I made five um, calls for five of my co-workers with this mohair from the Pyrenees. One of my co-workers, or at least, yeah, two of them, because I have two in this pink color. Two of them had asked, I, I had asked them for the, you know, to choose a color, and I brought it back from the that summer. Um, one of the two of them, you know, decided on this bright pink mohair. Uh, two of them had um, a more um, cinnamon curry type of color, a golden, golden light, brownish yellow type of color, and one wanted a white. So. From all the yarn I had to knit the two coals uh, and the hat, this is all I have left. So I'm quite happy with that because I've, you know, I've knitted from my stash. But one thing, when I say something, I should listen to myself. The few last hats I've knit were too big. And, you know, I had told myself, you need to knit the small size, even though, even though you think you have a bigger head, maybe I do not have the correct representation of my head. Anyway, the hat was too big. And when I say too big, really too big. So I was thinking, ah, oh, what do I do? Because I love this mohair, but, you know, unravel it, forget it. And, you know, I continued and continued knitting, saying, oh, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. And uh, it was not okay. At the end, it was not okay. It was too big. I would, you know, fold it up and roll it up, hoping it would hold, it was falling on my head. And, you know, unraveling something like that, that mohair, it's mohair and silk, or the silk thread, mohair and it's silk thread. Just forget it. It's impossible to unravel. So I was, you know, what am I going to be doing with this hat I've had in my head in this color for a long time? Not necessarily the Man Manhattan hat, but, you know, I thought, yeah, I like very much the Manhattan hat, the way it, it sits on the head and the shape and the crown and everything, the very particular crown. Um, so I said, okay, I'm going to felt it. I... I'm hearing you scringe, me felting that beautiful mohair. Yeah, I did. I did felt it. So I felt it with a regular laundry. Um, 30 degrees Celsius, I will write down below uh, the Fahrenheit equivalent. I haven't looked. Uh, so it's... it's um, uh, not a warm temperature, it's a very light temperature and the cycle I use to wash my colored um, clothes. Um, so a low temperature, a moderate, no, no, not, a much, not much of a spin, not much of an agitation, but enough to felt the hat. And, okay, <laughs> my poor hair, uh, I'm, I'm coming back from work, so uh, I hope it's going to be okay. So I felt it, the hat. So it, the size went down, you know, it's all felted. It. It's still soft, so it's not completely felted to the point it's harsh, and uh, uh, but it is felted. And as it was still a bit big, I placed, you can see it here, an elastic thread at the very end uh, of the hat, or the beginning because it was the cast on and somewhere here around the placement of the fold, folding of the brain. And yes, now I've been wearing it every day and today at work, it was, you know, below freezing. It's been below freezing every morning uh, with us. This morning there was heavy fog, freezing fog. It was very cold. And I wanted to wear that hat with that scarf, that is a bright pink scarf. And I love pink and green. So 
this morning I, you know, I chose to wear uh, the green sweater. That's the only one really green sweater I have. And my coat, I have a big down winter coat that is on the khaki color. So I like the pink and the khaki of the coat. And yeah, I wear wore my hat in the bus. It's about, depending if I have a direct bus or more, uh, a bus that takes um, a few loops uh, around some other places, it's between 15 and 30 minutes in the bus. So I usually work on my phone and, you know. But uh, yeah, I have a hat that I like, that fits me now that I have felted it and I've placed an elastic. So um, I could repair the fact that I did not need the small size. Oh. Next time I need to persuade myself to need the small size uh, uh, as a hat. And uh, yeah, yeah, I like it extremely warm, extremely warm. And uh, I haven't been cold at all for all these days where we had below freezing temperatures, a lot of wind, and you know, with gloves, my coat, the scarf, the warm sweater, the hat, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so next finished object, you have seen it on my last uh, video. I took about also four days to whip it up, to finish it up. Uh, how many days? Yeah, four days. It's the uh, Miracle from uh, Olga Buraya Kefelian. I love it. I love it. I love the look. I love the red. It's not going to be going with my outfit today. So, And I don't want to be too Christmassy. So, um, uh, but I've worn it a lot too uh, already. And uh, uh, yeah, I look... I like very much the way it looks. Uh, it's with the yarn my son uh, Theo bought me for, uh, some of the yarn my son Theo bought me for my birthday. I haven't used the uh, caramelly yellow color yet. I think I'm gonna make it. Um, but I, you know, at some point I wanted to cast on the meat and I said, no, 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 no. I want the hat. So, you know, I made the hat. Uh, a very, very easy, pattern, I do recommend it uh, to you. I can, you know, uh, put it on so that you can see how it is, you know, forget, try to forget the <laughs> Christmassy vibe. Uh, you know, it's a light, it's decay weight, a light uh, coal with a lot of texture and uh, um, that goes very well with um, uh, also my other outfits and uh, um, I've worn it with a blue sweater and or blue jacket. It's perfect. It's perfect. So uh, another finished object that I love and uh, you know a bit of my son around my neck once again. Okay uh, next we are going to be moving to uh, work in progress. Uh, or works in progress. Uh, I won't show you the, I'm going to read the, <laughs> the name of the pattern, the Gingham Neck Warmer in Double Knit by uh, Gabriela Papali that uh, I have, I cast it on, um, I see, you've seen it, but I haven't worked on it since I've showed it to you two weeks ago. Uh, because I can't have several uh, mindful knits uh, I don't have enough time for mindful knitting. Uh, so I decided I was going to concentrate on my sorrel sweater. So uh, this neck warmer that I'm knitting with the yarn uh, my son Paula and his girlfriend brought me for my birthday uh, hasn't moved uh, since uh, you've last seen it. What has evolved, was, what has grown a bit is my sorrel sweater. And I have a bit of a sleeve. So I've knit a bit on the sleeve, not much, because once again, it's dark, so I can't, you see, I'm coming back from work, I'm filming the video, and you know, in a few minutes, we won't have any more sun. Around, you know, what time is it? It's uh, 
4.30 p.m. So, uh, yeah, in, in half hour, we won't have enough light. And I have lights here to film the video. And if I wasn't uh, filming the video and wanting the windows open to have to be able to catch up the last remaining of the light, I would have closed my windows and be on the artificial light. So I made the number of rounds uh, with uh, the storm colorway. I faded to the uh, the north. It's the north uh, uh, colorway. And now I'm just knitting with the north. Uh, so uh, the sorrel sweater, the pattern is by uh, Woolen Pine. And I'm using La um uh, yarns, uh, both the merino singles and um, the mohair that I'm uh, knitting it with. So it's winter cell for the mohair. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm going to go for long sleeves. I'm waiting out uh, what remains of the yarn. But I think with the north, uh, I have all of that left. That will be well enough to uh, knit a long sleeve long sleeves, two long sleeves, um, you know, rather than, you know, three quarter length, because with warmer sweaters, I prefer long sleeves. I have two warmer sweaters with uh, uh, three quarter length or elbow length uh, sleeves, and I don't think it's practical for me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I will knit with uh, a, long, a long sleeve. So here is you know what it's going to be looking like. I think it's going to be just fabulous. Am I wrote to say that this, my own piece of work is going to be fabulous. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, every time I, I, I work on it, I'm just pleased. I knit and I have a look and I knit and I have a look. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's one of the most impressive knits I've ever made so far and it's only because of the yarn the pattern is fabulous yes yes you have many fabulous patterns around yourself this yarn is just incredible in the way it faded on the color it's incredible so yes it's slowly growing at least it's not stalled and uh, at some point i would i would like that by this uh, next weekend, my first sleeve is finished. I hope so. I hope so. Anyway, that's my current uh, work, in work, work in progress. So next, next is going to be an acquisition. Um, and you know, I'm not supposed to be having any acquisitions uh, but um very lovely and friendly subscriber i'm not gonna say who this was you know who you are and if you want to uh, uh say who you are in the comments down below please do but i'm not gonna give up your name now um she decided she asked me if i could give her my address and she decided to send me a package um, with a package. So I said, you don't have to do so. Na, 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 na. Okay, she wanted to do so. So I said, okay. And, you know, it's Christmas before Christmas. And you have to know <laughs> that when I, you know, I had all the package open and everything and I had taken everything out of the package. Uh, I said, I'm going to be recycling the box and, you know, the paper that was inside. So um, my recycle um, facility ask for, asks for, uh, we disassemble all the packages, no boxes in boxes in boxes, because it's difficult for them to... Uh, um, to recycle and you know separate all the different things and there was a card at the bottom of the box that i had not seen and you know she's she sent me that and <laughs> as a birth, birthday present i'm you know just so um i'm gonna get emotional but it's it's it 
really, really brought me a lot of joy when I opened uh, this package. So uh, I've been spoiled. Uh, so in the package was two skeins of um, uh, an indie dyer. She's, uh, or the brand is Louis and Lola. Uh, and uh, uh, it's a hand dyed uh, yarns from someone in Tasmania, Karina Moore. I'm, I'm gonna place all the uh, uh, info down below uh, so that you can ha go have a look. And these two skeins of um, merino singles, superwash merino singles, yeah, in fingering weight in this purpley and green color. I had not realized, but you know, the pinkish, purple is not pink, but purple is in the same realm as pink to me, or is not too far away. And green is an association I said I, I, I love. And you know, I had not realized, I knew it, but I had not realized that here you have an association with purple and green speckles. So two skeins of extremely beautiful yarn. And these two skeins came with a pattern by, uh, from a designer, Helen Stewart. The pattern is, oh God, I, I, I thought I had it here anyway. Um, the pattern he is, um, let me, I'm going to be coming back right now. Yes, I, uh, I could not find my tab, so sorry. The pattern uh, is a rainforest canopy shawl. And uh, it's a lacy shawl that requires, that's been designed uh, to go with that yarn. And that requires two skins, so there is absolutely no question about that. I'm going to need um, the rest uh, rainforest canopy shawl um, with um, these two skins. So the designer, Helen Stewart, is also a uh, designer uh, from Australia. And uh, uh, she has, I did not know about her, she has a podcast, but a real podcast, not the kind of podcast people say they do on YouTube with a video. The real podcast on um, podcasting platforms. So uh, I had a listen uh, on you know, Apple podcast, whatever. And uh, she has, I don't know, 358 eight episodes. There is a lot of time for me to listen to when I'm driving or something like that and enjoy, you know, her, her, what, what, what she says. And, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, a beautiful present, you're going to tell me, yes, but that's not all. So in the package was also two skeins of another fingering weight, a bit, a teensy bit heavier fingering weight of this white, um, let me read, Polworth wool um, from these Polworth uh, sheep from Australia and so 90% Polworth uh, wool and 10% uh, mulberry silk and so there are two skeins um, I have not yet decided um, what I'm going to be doing with these two white skeins um, I've been leaning towards a vest or a sleepover I'm not sure there's enough for my side so I have to you know, daydream around that. And what I was telling her is that in addition to the extremely, the extreme pleasure I had opening this package, uh, feeling so blessed, um, what she's offering me in addition to yarn and knitting time and a fabulous object with beautiful yarn is daydream time. <laughs> Imagining what I can do with these skins uh, of yarn. And uh, white is something I do not have in my stash. And I have to say that the not quite wa white, it's a white uh, yarn with kind of grayish speckles. Uh, uh, I want it from Holzgarn and what, and was 
you know, out of stock uh, was what made me go over the fence with a big order with other things because I was so frustrated I could not get this white right yarn. And in my mind, I, you know, in my head, I had promised me if I can go through all my stash and complete my uh, no buy project, I will get two scones of this um, old yarn, yarn. So it's these two skins are much softer than the super soft yarn from Holds Gone. Uh, extremely luxurious. Um, I wish you could touch it. And uh, yeah, so um, I will tell you what I decide to knit with these two ones. Uh, once I can, you know, I'm sure that I will uh, have enough. And uh, if I do not, if I can pair it, you know, with other yarn from my stash, but uh, Yes, two extremely beautiful uh, white fingering weight uh, yarn from this sheep from Australia. Okay, that was not all. And when I said I was spoiled, I think I really was spoiled. She included these four skeins. I'm going to you know, show them one by one to you of mohair from Wak Wacktail Yarns, um, another uh, producer from uh, Australia. Here is uh, their card detail and the rest of the detail. I'm gonna I'm gonna link everything down below. You know, link to their website. I think yeah, they have. They it looks like they have a website. I haven't you know looked yet. So these wagtail silk uh, and mohair uh, yarn, um, let me see, I, the, night, the night is coming up and uh, um, let me see where, no, it's 100% fine uh, kid mohair yarn. So this very nice blue one is dark cyan uh, a beautiful blue you know i love blue um there is a lighter blue that is medium cyan and a variegated one that is variegated cyan yes so uh you know maybe maybe what i was thinking when i saw these i was once again completely you know, baffled with that is um, I saw uh, people fading mohair. I do not recall. I think it was uh, Caitlin from uh, Caddy Jack Knits uh, or Jackie. Was it Jackie who faded the mohair uh, in the Sorel sweater? And this is an idea. Uh, so maybe not a Sorel all by itself. But fading the mohair in a in a project with these three ones is uh, something I I've been thinking of. I, I I do not know which one what what to do. I haven't I haven't decided for a pat pattern yet. And this one is leaf green, another beautiful green. <laughs> so you know I love that. And um, so all the the three, these three uh, uh, smaller skeins are 50 grams and the variegated one is 100 grams. So, uh, yeah, I'm completely astonished and um, it's just incredible. The yarn is extremely beautiful, extremely shiny. And you may recall when I filmed uh, and uh, tried to take pictures of the mohair I got from uh, this summer, not from the Pyrenees, but from the farm that is in Poitou, next to where my mother lives. The, the mohair was extremely difficult to take pictures of because it was so reflective and so shiny. And uh, yeah, that's the same for um, these skins. And I have to say that you know, the light has been so, the days, the weather has been so cold and gloomy and, and, uh, and with fog. Uh, I have not had the time yet 
or the opportunity yet to take pictures and uh, you know report on Instagram, for example. But I will, I will do so as soon as uh, as soon as I uh, have the opportunity to make uh, pictures. And if that was not enough, pattern, the pattern, the yarn to go with it, more yarn, more extremely beautiful yarn. Um, there was, look at that, a little uh, stitch marker or progress keeper. I, I placed it here so that I don't lose it. Uh, and look at that. It's a cat. It's a cat. And so with the light, it's a bit difficult to see. But uh, yeah, it's a cat. It's a smiling cat. So uh, my next project is going to be using it. I have um, also, as I finished the hat, I had this one on the hat and I have not uh, put it in my uh, storage yet. So uh, yes, a little cat, I'm not sure. I, I'll take a picture because I'm not sure you can see it because of the light I'm using so that we are not all completely in the dark. You see, it's coming, it's beginning to be uh, quite dark. So I have no words. I have no words. I don't know how to thank you. Uh, of course, you did not have to. Um, I'm so pleased with what I received. Um, I'm so pleased that what I've sent you, you liked what I've sent you, but it was not necessarily for you to send me something back. I, 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 I hope you understand that because Sending the mohair yarn from the Pyrenees and the other farm and the yarn from um, um, Cotentin, from Normandy, uh, was something that brought me joy and happiness. You know, preparing, thinking and, you know, sending and everything. Seeing you were happy to receive it and, uh, you know, show you need with it, uh, bring me brought me much joy and happiness and you really did not have to send me anything and uh, uh, when I opened the package uh, you know I cried of course I cried I went I was emotional because too much joy and happiness <laughs> these were not tears of, <laughs> of being sad and hurt no not at all um, uh, yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, these kind of things, these kind of relationships with people you've never met, uh, but people you get to know uh, on the internet uh, via YouTube, YouTube allowed that, um, is something that, you know, brings me much joy and happiness. And, you know, knowing that people watch the videos and, you know, need along and uh, it you know it's about you know 30 20 30 40 minutes of your time that you are uh, dedicating to watching me and or doing other things and listening to me uh, this brings me much joy and happiness and i hope it does to to you um, because we do have to actively work on that and, uh, you know, such a package as today is just <laughs> a huge load, load of joy and happiness that I'm going to, you know, keep inside and sharing and cherish. And, you know, whenever I, I will feel uh, down or sad, I will think about <laughs> I will think about you. Uh, but anyway, um, we do have to actively work and place happiness into our lives because it's not coming all all by itself and we are usually much driven by you know the flow and uh, uh, the wind and the cold wind and the dark days and everything so we do have to act on being happy and I know that maybe for some people it's going to be very difficult to hear because um, because you are in a difficult place but hanging there uh, try to find these little sparks of joy, the one spark of joy you can find per day and, you know, work around that and make it grow. And I'm, I can assure you it will grow. 
and joy and happiness is going to be part of your life. Um, if you do decide, it's going to be part of your life. Of, okay, I, I, know, I know some people are going to tell me, well, but this and that, and uh, people died, and yes, yes, I know, but even in the darkest time, we can find something to, you know, focus on that, that is a bit a spark of life and joy and happiness. And uh, yeah, I thank you very much uh, for being part of my life, all of you who are uh, watching me. I thank you very much for allowing me to be a bit part of your own life. I also thank you for watching and I will see you next time.